Okay. Next day around Taupo exploring. And uh, yeah, weather conditions have got worse than better. Had put my beanie on. It's not as not as cold, but it's uh, as you can probably tell by the uh, the microphone here. We've got a little bit of wind. Um, going to a uh, a neat little fishing ground I used to go to. Um, beautiful little spot. It's called Fokkamoanga Point. Uh, it's a nice little. Uh, I think it's about 1.8 kilometres walk from the road. Uh, you go through Acacia Bay to get to it, and um, yeah, a Rangatira Point's another another uh, walking area you can go to as well. So um, yeah, we're heading down there, um, but it's going to be windy. It's going to be cold. That would be nice for old time sakes to go and have a look at it. The lake level's quite high. I'm trying to get across here without getting my feet wet. Whoa! Wait for this little this little gut to finish. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, rocky. Oh, look at that inky, inky black sky and the dark lake. Down to the sunshine of the uh, the island down there. Much of a headland. Nice and sunny there, but yeah, what a, a rugged few rocks. I don't know how far I'll get around here, but tucked in the corner. Oh, there's an easy track to it there anyway. Oh, I come the long way. There's a track right behind it. Right, and we've made it to Fokkenwanger Point. Oh, and it's a good old rough one today. Honestly, probably the roughest I've ever seen it. It's, um, oh, the wind's just powering straight in here, but yep, definitely don't want to get caught in some of that. I was planning on going out onto the, some of those rocks, but uh, I'm going to take the video from here. Um, yeah, Fokkenwanger Point, a great place to come and do some fishing, especially in the, um, the summer months when the, uh, the fish are returning from the uh, rivers out into the lake. They're very hungry fish and they want to get their condition factor back up again. They uh, chase the smelt which come on in summer. So smelt is a, a great bait fish that trout like to eat and uh, they get their condition on pretty quick. So uh, as you can imagine if on a really nice calm day standing off these rocks and uh, casting a, either a fly or a spinning rod out you can be quite successful at uh, sometimes catching some nice trout. So uh, yeah, nice deep spot out there and around the corner is, this, this is Mine Bay around the corner. We've got some footage of uh, a nicer day when we went out in a boat and got some photos of the Maori carving. Dude will pop them up here. Um, the Maori carving, so they're about 14 meters out of the lake. Um, I think commissioned by a guy who paddled around that area and saw this perfect opportunity for a nice um, a nice carving. Uh, consulted with a guy that said he'd carve it, bought another, I think another four carvers in. They carved this Maori pattern in the, uh, in the side of the hillside. Okay folks, I've got a little experiment for some of you that don't know pumice. Many, many, I don't know, thousands, maybe even a million years ago. There was a massive eruption here. So what I'm actually standing on is Lake Taupo. And Lake Taupo, if you, you Google it, you find that it was at one stage, it still is, a volcano, a massive volcano. And when it took up, or blew up, it uh, covered a large portion of the earth, or most of the earth, with uh, ash and uh, debris. This is a rock. We call it pumice. And uh, I'm going to try something. <laughs> And it could fail badly because it feels pretty heavy and pretty waterlogged. But uh, tell me, it's going to sink or swim. Here we go. Okay, one rock. I'm going to try and catapult it into the water. Oh. How's that? For a moment I thought I failed badly, but it uh, took a while to come up, but that is it. It's what we call a pumice stone. Very abrasive. 
Um, people use it um, as an exfoliant. It's good. Um, us locals sometimes take it to the bath with us, and uh, or in the shower, and you can use it to uh, scrub your feet. Alrighty. Okay. Out in the peace and quiet, doing our walk back on the track. Well, I am. Judy's done a naughty thing and walked off without me. She shouldn't do things like that. She should always stay together. Bit of bush sense. See if I can find her. But anyway, that was uh, Fock and Weaver Point. Nice little spot. Take a picnic. Take a fishing rod. Try your luck um, at catching the fish that come around. Summertime's best. They like the, uh, the smelt, feeding on the smelt. Um, there'll be other seasons too where you get um, uh, the green beetles and uh, cicadas. They um, come fall off the trees and float in the water and they're easy game. Ah, found Judy. Cool. Awesome. How we going? All right. I was worried there. You left me and didn't tell me you were going. Naughty girl. Chasing birds. You know what happens? You slip over four in the water. Cobwebs in there, no, no bats. No bats, that's good. Right, well, as you can see, day's got a bit gloomy, even got a bit wet and rainy, so uh, we're calling it quits and jumping into the Wairaki Terraces. It's a thermal health spa on bits and pieces, but it's got basilica bathing pools. Massage therapy, geothermal walkway, a Maori cultural experience, crafts in the calf. Bit of touristy stuff. Alright, so we've paid our money. There's a couple of things to do. There's a uh, number one's the, uh, the water, the water pool. Number two is the uh, I think the famous pink and white terraces, uh, or the silica terraces they call it. Number three, oh there's a geyser, cool. Um, yeah, and there's a little bit of a walk, a little bit drizzy and drizzly. Um, on the side of it, me here, you can see these big uh, stainless pipes. These are, there's, there's a wicked amount of uh, geothermal energy created around here in, um, in Taupo, Rotorua, all those sort of places. So uh, these are ducting steam from bores and through power stations and things. You think release one over there. So obviously no need to remind the water is a scalding, very, very hot, but how pretty does that look? This is the terraces. The terraces were one of, I believe, the eighth wonders of the world before it was uh, destroyed by a, uh, I think, a volcanic eruption. So this is a recreation of what was back then uh, at the pink and white terraces. Now according to the map, up this uh, top end is meant to be a, an, erupting, an erupting geyser, number three, and it is, spouting water, how cool is that, oh it's gorgeous, so I'll try and read this, so here we go, 
the silica of rich waters brought to the Earth's surface from one and a half kilometers underground flows out of this geyser at 130 degrees Celsius in two cooling ponds and then cascades over the terraces. At the point the water enters the pool, pressure is released into the atmosphere, billowing steam high into the air. This steam is about 6% of the total fluid and it is the remaining 94% that is silica enriched fluid then mixes with cooler waters creates a coral like formation and multicolored variations Well, it's a terrific little walk around uh, this uh, Wairaki thermal area. Um, they've done a really nice job recreating these uh, the terraces. I mean, if you look at the watercolour down here, it's stunning, it's mesmerising. You can see the silica sort of forming down in this little, uh, little, little stream that's coming into the water. that been leaving that deposit on these terraces over here you can see the little um, waterfall over the steam there you can see the guys are just giving out again just throwing up the uh, hot water milky sort of color look at that that little ledge right there looks so fragile it's like coral Definitely working its magic down this end. It's, uh, really solidified the little thing, you know. Because as it comes down it's cooling and further down is where they've got the uh, the pools all set up which will uh, have a nice little soak in soon. Very, very nice. Oh, so up behind me, you got that geyser, and that was spurting out water from 1.5 kilometers down at 130 degrees Celsius. So, as it travels down that little channel, it pulls it a little bit, and it's falling off over those rocks. But yeah, it's really nice and relaxing down there. And uh, as I say, it disappears over around that way a beautiful spot
So yeah, it's, it's, it's not the cheapest sort of thing you can go to, but it's a, it's a long term stay that you have to do. You know, you stay down there, you walk around and things like that, and you get all the, the health benefits and the relaxation. So yeah, it's, it's a nice spot to go and uh, just say goodbye to what, two or three hours. Yep, easy. Yeah, easy, it's lovely. Anyway, next port of a call, we're hungry. Yep. <laughs> Catch ya. Just our swim, hungry as, and just down from our swim is a place called, uh, well it's Wairaki Golf Course. I'm not very good at golf, I'll, I'll give it a fair, fair crack, but uh, yeah, that white ball just don't like me, keeps wanting to hide. Anyway, um, yeah, we've got lunch at this lovely spot at Wairaki, it's Wairaki Golf Course. So uh, pop in here and have a look, fill up the belly. So one of the great things here at the Wairaki Golf Course, they, um, you can actually just see it at the window here, there's a, um, a predator proof fence all the way around the golf course and they've taken part in a, um, I'm not too flowing with this name, but it's the Taki, it was an endangered bird. Um, it says down here that uh, New Zealand, however less than 100 breeding Peers, so um, they've been sort of saved and uh, being reintroduced out into one of these many areas at the golf course at Wairaki. Uh, also, another one is the kiwi. So because of their predator, predator through fence all the way around here, there's been a, a few kiwi that's been released out in this golf course as well. So yeah, make sure you yell four every time you strike the ball, just in case you knock over a kiwi or a takahi. Anyway, we're going to enjoy a very nice little snack here at the Wairaki Golf Course. Rod length to go, Barbara. Keep going, Barbara. It's easy, does it? Uh, Have I lost him? No, 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 he's coming around. Just, just easy. You have to go to the side, I think, Dina. Might get him out the side there. Wind him a little bit. You'll see the boat and want to run again, yeah. A little bit more winding. Probably about three or, three or four turns, Barbara. That'll be it. Got him. Oh my god. Smaller really fish, but a nice condition fish. Yep. Have we got another one? Yep. Oh, yep. Nice That's condition. Sweet. There we go.
Oh, couldn't resist. A uh, little catch up, had a great fish out there yesterday um, with uh, Jude's mum and Jude and my mum and dad went out. Absolutely awesome day as you can see. I didn't do much commentary in bits and pieces but Jude will have that uh, footage on there. Um, and today is fly out day. Um, it's a bit weird. We're, um, we've come up from Christchurch to Taupo and we're going back to Christchurch to fly out. Um, there's a little reasoning which is a bit confusing to explain but uh, you'll see a bit more footage I guess of uh, Taupo or uh, of Christchurch I should, should say or um, Jude will blend that on the end of our Christchurch I'm not too sure what she'll do there but I had to come out um, this is fly out day hopefully we can get out okay I think that the uh, the fog no it's not a fire it's a fog um, amazing just settled in here um, opposite uh, Jude's mum's place this is, uh, that's meant to be a landing pad back there for a, a helicopter for the hospital. There's a hospital just back there, so uh, it's a, it's a coolish sort of morning. I've braved it without me beanie or me hat today, but I had to get out and get this photo or this video. Um, yeah, I, th I think we're, we're talking, it's probably two degrees, three degrees. It's actually not too cold. And the great thing with this, it'll burn off and we'll end up with an absolute cracker of a day. So sadly be traveling most of it, but um, yeah, just had to pop out and show the fog and um, keep you posted with uh, what we've done and what we're about to do. So uh, see you in the next leg. <laughs> testing, testing. Oh, what do you know? Okay, so stop. Oh, well, maybe. Oh, yeah. Right, so we're paying the money. <laughs> testing, testing. Oh, my notes. Damn it. Um, it was the first hydro. Well, there you go. Aratea to your rapids. Go. Well, there you go. Aratea to your rapids. It's about the second time I've seen it in my lifetime and uh, it never ceases to amaze you. Sorry, I got the sun in my bloody face. 